is a natural response to loss. To grieve is to love. And the deeper the love, the deeper the grief. Grieving the death of a loved one or a relationship can make you angry, sorrowful, bitter, and vulnerable. Especially when you have invested your heart and soul into the relationship. It can affect your thoughts, behavior, beliefs, and sense of self. The pain usually manifests in different ways and your ability to cope vary. Hello amazing people. Welcome to my YouTube channel Amazing Grace with Bosse. Have you subscribed to my channel? What are you waiting for? It's free. Hit on the subscribe button right away and join this amazing community of amazing people who want to do better. Now, today, we're going to talk about grief. Grief is an inevitable part of our lives. It will visit each and every one of us at one point or the other. If you like, say, God forbid, I reject it. It's not my portion. Hey, whose portion is it? The truth is, we will all grieve about something, sometime in our lives. Sometimes we are tested very little. Other times, <laughs> it's on a very large scale, such that it brings sorrow to our lives. That is the reality of life. Now, grief is not limited to the death of a loved one. People also grieve the loss of a friendship or a relationship, a marriage, a miscarriage, loss of a job, and sometimes we grieve for things that does not directly affect us. We feel other people's pain. So, do not ever, ever laugh or mock anybody for their misfortune. Because, hmm, like it or not, grief is turn by turn. It comes in different designs and colors. Mm -hmm. Now, life happens. Yes. How do you grieve when a loved one dies? How do you grieve a relationship when it comes to an end? How do you deal with this new normal? Now, we know there are different stages of grieving. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Well, not everybody will experience all the stages. The first stage of grief is indeed shock and denial. I know that, and I say that, from personal experience because when I lost a child 30 years ago I was just 26 years old I was numb numb for quite some time I could not believe it I was saying it's a lie it's a lie why will God allow my child to die she was barely six weeks old. What did I do? Who did I offend? How can this happen? Why me? These were questions I was asking myself. I was in that tough place for some time. And I was angry. So angry that I could not pray. You know, when you're young, <laughs> you have this feeling that... If you're living right and in the will of God, then bad things should not happen to you. But that's not the truth. That's not true at all. Bad things happen to good people. The death of a loved one creates an emptiness in your heart. It's the same feeling you get if your relationship comes to an end. 
you grieve and you ask questions but you don't want to remain in that state forever because it may lead to depression you do not want to get to that point where you spiral out of control and then require psychiatric intervention you don't want that yes we know that there's no time limit with grief or timeline to heal it's different for everybody based on their peculiar circumstances but one thing is sure the sharp pants of pain becomes blunt with time yes even though you will never forget as long as you are alive but there are triggers that make you remember in my case for example I had friends who had babies the same time as I did and I've had to attend their weddings so when I see the kids it triggers the memory of the daughter I lost so it's important therefore that we learn how to manage grief it doesn't matter what you're grieving about grief is grief you must find ways to overcome your spouse passes such is life we will all die someday your boyfriend or husband or wife abandons you or pots to another woman or man not today it's been happening for ages and it will continue to happen but life must go on so grieve with sense borrow yourself brain so to overcome grief take your pain to God and search the scriptures for the appropriate prayer for your situation you will be amazed how grief can open your eyes to God's wonders one thing is guaranteed your grief will bring you closer to God or turn you away from God and the choice is yours grief can also give you hope and opportunity two do not bury your pain cry if you have to cry cry and cry and cry again it's okay to cry you're human after all roll on the floor ask why me acknowledge how you're feeling tell yourself the worst has happened and deal with it three give yourself time to mourn so you don't become vulnerable there's no time limit to grief it's different for everybody it can take months or years and that is fine but be careful so you don't become depressed four connect with your inner self oh yes find you be patient and gentle with yourself don't be in a hurry to return to normal it took you years to build that bond that you lost it will take you years to recover it will take you time to recover if you had good memories celebrate it if you have bad memories delete it five it is okay to share how you're feeling with people you trust even though sometimes it's hard to express how you feel allow a glimpse of your grief to your trusted a team you will be amazed how they can help you through the process. Six, don't be embarrassed to ask for help 
and support if you need it. People are not mind readers. If you need any kind of help, ask for it. Patak patak. They will say, sorry, I can't help you. No wahala. Nothing spoiled. After all, nobody owes you. Seven. Do not allow the pain to consume you. Fight it. Start to dream even in your grief. Get moving. Do not limit yourself. See the world as your oyster. Eight. Go for therapy. If you think you cannot cope or you are experiencing anxiety or dealing with depression, and you need a neutral person who has the skill to help you deal with your grief. I didn't say go to your pastor. There's a place for pastors and there's a place for professional therapists. Nine, accept your new normal. Accept your new reality. Accept your new life. Now, that does not mean that you just get over it. But it means you have acknowledged the loss and feel okay to move forward. So stop grieving over what could have been. Start to look to the future. Grief is not a good thing. But it can bring you to the realization that you cannot help yourself. You are not in control of your life. Because if you are, you will not allow certain things to happen to you. It shows that you are not the master of your life. And so, you must align yourself with the master, with God Almighty. When you're done grieving, be ready to embrace the new you. After intense grief and sorrow, you are not likely to be the same again. Grief can be a gift. It can open your eyes to things you could only imagine. You will see the good, the bad, the ugly, the awesome. So don't feel any form of guilt when you start to unfold your new being. Hmm. It was there all along. It was only incubating. And unfortunately, it took grief to make you brand new. Embrace it. So, you have a choice. Allow grief to cripple you or rise above it and be what God says you will be. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirits. That's our show for today. Thank you for watching. Until I come your way again, grieve with sense. Bye-bye.